Breaking news, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization saying today that world food prices are the highest they've been in more than 10 years. Take a look at this. Wheat prices growing to their highest level in years, currently up 22 percent over the past one year. Oats are insane. I mean, oats are up 158 percent year over year. Coffee also spiking up 85 percent as the persistent Western drought and supply chain issues pile onto already disastrous conditions for farmers and restaurant suppliers. You'd think that a company like Dine Brands Global, parent of Applebee's and IHOP, using all that wheat in their pancakes and hamburger buns, serving up coffee, would be slammed. But the stock is jumping 7.5% after the company reported it had doubled its net income, beating on earnings per share and revenue expectations for the third quarter. But do more signs of growing inflation bode poorly for the rebound of restaurants across the U.S.? Well, let us go straight to an Applebee's where Dine Brand CEO John Payton is joining us now with, I believe, a, a juicy hamburger in front of you, right? I mean, uh, tell us what you're experiencing with the price of, of food rising here. I will. That's, that's our, uh, our bacon onion ring cheeseburger, and I've got an Oreo chocolate shake next to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm right around the corner from you, Liz. I'm at the world's largest Applebee's on, our, on the third floor here on 50th Street in Times Square. Yeah, um, and I can see that shiny, yummy burger. Oh my gosh, with the with the oh the onions right in there. But talk about how you've been able to wrap your arms around these rising commodity prices. I mean, when I see that wheat is up twenty two percent, we know that coffee and sugar oats are are really spiking as well. Talk to me about how you're managing to do this. Are you raising prices, and if not, are you going to be forced to? So commodity prices for, for our two brands, Applebee's and IHOP, are up about 6% this year. And that's mm. our forecast for the whole year is 6%. But that has been accelerating. And in the third quarter, it was 10%. So uh, to your point, you know, we are seeing this increase in, in commodity prices. And you know, we handle that um, through our scale and through our partnership with our franchisees. Uh, and let me tell you what that means. We have a, a purchasing co-op that is jointly owned by our Applebee's owners and our IHOP owners. And that co-op purchasing on behalf of both brands purchases about $2 billion of, of goods and services for the restaurants throughout the year. So we've got a pretty influential footprint in the market and we can't offset all of the scarcity issues and we can't offset all of the pricing issues. But when it comes to the things that are either scarce or the prices is driving up like chicken, uh, beef and pork products, yep. paper products for our takeout and delivery. Um, we're doing the best we can because of our scale to address those issues. Well, John, I, I think that you just made a really important point that you were able to, because you can buy at such scale, uh, you can keep the prices down. Uh, one thing that I'm quite sure your franchisees are dealing with, though, that they can't figure out at the moment is this worker shortage. We know that there are so many restaurants that have the Help Wanted sign out. Tell me how you're helping your franchisees deal with you know, the fact that A, wages are going up, and, and B, if they're going to come work for you, they're going to demand that, wait a minute, you got to pay me more if I'm going to do this. It is such an issue, Liz, and the, the availability of labor, honestly, I'll tell you, is, is the number one issue that keeps me up at night. Wow. Uh, because it's so hard to deal with on so many levels. If you think about it, it causes our servers to work extra shifts or extra hours. Um, it directly affects the revenue of and profit of our franchisees if they can't be open at late night, which is one of the hours that are, that are so hard to staff. So, you know, I'll give you the data point, which is that, that nationwide for both brands, we're about 85% of full staffing. And that's the same as, as last quarter. And so we're doing two things. We're looking short term, very realistically, to work with our franchisees to help them not only with recruiting, we've had national hiring days that we've organized on behalf of both of our, our, our franchises. We're also focused on retention because once you get the new team member, they'll move next door for 50 cents or a dollar more an hour. Uh, yes, so, they will. So culture and learning and training and advancing them through their career has, is more important than ever. But the, the even more important and interesting question, Liz, that, that we've been asking ourselves is, is this, new, is this the new normal? And will this labor shortage um, be with us for years to come? And we're beginning to think, you know, we should at least be planning for that to be the case. And we're already researching and testing robotics to make our kitchens more efficient, AI to help with delivery and takeout, 
handhelds for servers. We've already gotten 500 Applebee's like this one, all to combat the, the, the potential long-term labor shortage mm. of capital. Well, again, it's it's the technology future that a lot of people have said, warned, I don't know, you know, that that they will replace these jobs. If you had the ear of the administration, the Commerce Department, what would you say to them to help illuminate them as to exactly what's happening and whether this is a problem that can be solved? No, what, what we said to our representatives um, in Congress as, as, and to our elected officials is, is, is more broadly, and what we think is important is for them to understand the importance of franchising in America. And that franchising is a growth, is an entrepreneurial growth engine. It is. For, for people who have started literally our IHOP franchisee of the year 30 years ago, started out as a dishwasher, and today he owns three IHOPs that support him and his family. And that's what I'd like the administration and our elected officials to understand is that this, these are small businesses um, owned by, you know, Americans who are working really hard, and they're not high margin businesses, as you know. And so anything they can do to help us um, is helping small business in America. I have seen these chains of sort of um, artisanal pizza jump up, and I love them, whether it's Blaze Pizza or Skinny Pizza. And are, do you... Do you put your eye as Dine Global CEO on something like that, a new chain to acquire? Well, first I'll tell you, I'm a pizza purist. It's either cheese or pepperoni, and, that, <laughs> and that's it for me. No, no cauliflower crust. I love that cauliflower crust. Okay. Exactly. My wife and I can't order the same pizzas. We're literally, you know, opposites. So, but the, the important thing is when it comes to an acquisition of a new brand right. for Dine, whether it's pizza or some other concept, the, the first thing that we're focused on is making sure we have the infrastructure, the scalable infrastructure in place to plug in seamlessly a third brand. And that's what we're building to support Applebee's and IHOP today. So we've got a common technology architecture for back of house, front of house, and guest facing technology. We have common learning platforms. And as I mentioned before, a, a common purchasing co-op. So having all of that in place is again, a great example of how we leverage our scale and how we would be ready to plug in the third brand if and when we find the right brand at the right time. Okay, well, do me a favor, save one of the onion rings for me. Just one, That's. I'm not asking for a lot, John. My gosh. How about, um, the, how about the quickly melting Oreo shake? <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, for our investor audience, the shares have been doing really well, up 53% year to date. John Payton of Dine Global, thank you very much for joining us.